Well, good evening. Uh, thank you much, very much for staying for this award ceremony. Uh, yesterday, I carried out my first duty as the EMS president, which is to announce that the bar was open, uh, which was something which was very nice to do. Uh, but this evening is something which gives me even more pleasure, which is to uh, be in charge of the EMS awards and some other awards which take place at the annual meeting. So up on the screen, yes, uh, we've got the awards that's going to be presented. Uh, the, the first five, at least those in the first five bullets, uh, the way we're going to do that is that I am going to announce the awards and Heinke Schlunzen over there is the treasurer of the EMS is actually going to present the award. We're doing it like this to avoid me making an announcement here, rushing across over there to hand something over and then rushing back again. So that's going to make things a bit simpler. Uh, then we get on to the Trump Awards, and then uh, Tanya Senya is going to actually present those on behalf of the, the Trump Foundation. Then there's the Harry Ossum Prize, and Harry Ossum will present that. And finally, we get on to the Silver Medal, and unfortunately, Julia Slingo is not going to be able to be here, uh, but Florence Rabier is going to give the laudation, and then I'm going to read out a message from Julia. So... Let's start. Uh, as young people will find out, when you get to my age, people either put glasses on to read or take glasses off, and I have to take mine off <laughs> so I can see. Right, so, so first of all, we have uh, four awards for the uh, Young Scientist Travel Awards, and the first one goes to John and uh, Ariaga from the Universidad Complutense de Madrid from Spain, and uh, his presentation is about mesoscale turbulence interactions in the AVL uh, dynamics, a 10-year study at Cabo, and he's going to give his presentation on Thursday. So, John Ander. And the next travel award goes to Ina Gubenko uh, from the Hydrometeorological Research Center of, of Russia, uh, based in Moscow. And uh, she has a poster, which is an explicit method of mesoscale convective storm prediction for central region of Russia. <laughs> the next Young Scientist Award is for Maria Kurbatova, also from the Hydrometeorological Research Center of Russia. And uh, unfortunately, we have missed uh, her presentation, uh, which was earlier today, which is on. <laughs> well, the presentation was on an analysis of different wind gust forecast approaches. And the final Young Scientist Travel Award goes to Marco Rial from the Abdus of Salam International Center for Theoretical Physics, Trieste. And he has a poster on a climatology of explosive cyclones using a multi-tracking approach. And his poster is going to be available tomorrow. So the next award is the Outstanding Post Award for 2016. And 2016, that's not a mistake. This is the award from the meeting in Trieste last year. And uh, this goes to a, a poster uh, dealing with the sensitivity, sensitivity of the regional climate model LRO0 to land surface changes. And uh, Julie Birklands is going to receive the award.
writes the MS Young Scientist Awards goes to Juha Alto from the University of Helsinki and the Finnish Meteorological Institute. Uh, he has contributed significantly to understanding local climate variation in chloride regions, developing a new high-quality long-term gridded time series of seven variables for Finland, together with the assessment of interpolation uncertainty, which is the cornerstone of climate services and essential components in environmental impact studies. And you can see his presentation on Friday. The next award is the EMS Journalist Award. And this goes to Astrid Momitveit from Norway for a very important work in helping to bridge the gap in understanding between experts and non-experts covering complex topics and presenting them in an understandable and accessible way. Without oversimplifying them, she gives the reader the full capacity to understand a complex topic. So Astrid. And next, the awards for the uh, Outreach Communications. And uh, this goes to, I have to try my French here, which is never my strong point, Le Tron du Climat et ses messagers, something like that. And uh, <laughs> a bold attempt, I thought. Uh, it's for a very innovative and original concept to develop an exhibition on a train as a catalyst for discussions about climate change issues between scientists cultural mediators, and the general public. And Christophe Castour is going to collect this award. Now we have the TV Weather Forecast Award, and this goes to Helga van Loer uh, from RTL in the Netherlands. Helga combines a weather and climate in her presentation in a way that makes it relevant and interesting to viewers. Adding climate-related information to the forecast was very helpful. Helga has clearly honed her presentation skills with great use of voice, facial expressions, and arm movements to convey the message supported by her graphics. Unfortunately, uh, Helga can't be here today, so she's going to collect the award tomorrow. Give her a clap anyway. <laughs> and then the final award in this sequence is the Outstanding Contribution Award. And this goes to Sildan Joffre from, from Finland, who's chair of the MS Committee on Meetings. Sylvain is honoured for pursuing and advancing the growth of the annual meeting activities of the society through continuous and exceptional dedication to international networking and connecting diverse communities. I'd like to just add uh, to that, and I think it's just amazing the way in which the annual meeting has developed under Sylvain's leadership. And I think what we've seen this week already just shows how, how important these annual meetings are to the meteorological community. And that's under Sylvain's leadership. And Silva would like to say a few words, I believe. Does that mean that I've been forgiven for all the trouble I created with the restructure? <laughs> Now, well, if I put some energy in, uh, into the EMS uh, conference development, uh, I think it was easy because I think it's a right forum, you know, for bringing all the components of our community and also to, to enhance all the, the benefits we can 
uh, bring to, to, to society. Uh, well, I've been doing this job, but I, w I was not alone, so I want to thank also uh, my colleagues from COM, from the PSC, all the conveners, and especially Martina Junge. So thanks again. And remember, come back to Budapest next year. Right, the, the Trump Award is going to be presented by Tanya Segner, who represents the Trump Foundation. Thank you, Mr. President. I have uh, the honor to represent the Trump Foundation this year. And uh, as you may know, the Trump Foundation has the mission to, let's say, promote biometrology in the broad sense. The chairman of the Trump Foundation this year is not able to be here, Mr. Bob Ritveld. So he delegates this pleasure to hand over the awards to me. And the first EMS Trump Award is this year is assigned to Stephanie Horion and for her paper revealing turning points in ecosystem functioning over the Northern Eurasian agricultural frontier. It was published last year in Global Change Biology. And again, I have to say that, unfortunately, for a very good personal reason, she is not able to be here with us today, but she has sent a short video. The committee that have been selecting our paper, um, we are very glad, as I said, um, that uh, this paper was appreciated. Uh, and uh, thanks again. Hi. Hi everybody, my name is Stefania Oyon. I'm an assistant professor at Copenhagen University and I'm the first author of the paper that has been selected for the Trump, uh, the EMS Trump Award this year. Unfortunately, I could not travel to the EMS meeting because I just uh, gave birth recently. Uh, but I'm uh, very honored and uh, my co-author also are very honored to have been selected uh, for this award. A little bit about the paper. This uh, paper is about detecting abrupt changes in ecosystem functioning in Central Asia. And the very first idea uh, when we started to uh, work on this uh, research was to uh, use long-term um, trend analysis uh, of Earth observation data to see uh, if we can disentangle climate and uh, anthropogenic uh, drivers in uh, change is in eco yeah that are driving the changes in ecosystem functioning. Um, so we, we actually went uh, beyond looking at linear trend analysis for this and we used um, the detected discontinuities in the, in the time series to see if we can um, link them to changes in either land use or uh, climate, um, major drought events and uh, different uh, type of drivers. Uh, there will be a lecture uh, on Friday morning about this uh, that I will be giving through Skype. So if you're interested, just feel free to come and uh, I will be there to answer your question. Uh, and thanks again to the to the um, committee, uh, the member of the committee that have been selecting our paper. Um, we are very glad, as I said, um, that uh, this paper was appreciated. Uh, and uh, thanks again. Hi. Okay, give Hi, her an applause. My name is Stephen Boy. Even if she is not here. But I hope that the other three people who are we supporting to attend this conference, the young scientists will, are all, all three here. And the first one is Anastasia Bleta, and uh, she will present uh, her work, cardiovascular admissions related to particulate matter in Heraklion, Crete Island, Greece. Is Anastasia here? Yeah.
also a woman, and I'm glad that we have such a nice representation of females. Olga Gomerstadt, and uh, her work is modeling of summer thermal comfort conditions in Arctic city on micro scale. And I see that also Olga is We need also to have a man <laughs> to compliment the whole group. It is Mikhail Varenso, and his work is investigation of urban cost mesoscale features of Moscow megacity. And I give the floor back to our EMS president. Briefly, because uh, the next prize is the Harry Osson Prize for Innovation in Meteorology. And Harry Osson, I believe, is going to present the prize. Mr. President, thank you very much. All prizes this afternoon were known, but this prize not. This uh, will be revealed now. So when I would be a quiz master, I could say to the three finalists, divide the money or take your loss or make you win. <laughs> um, I have just been given the check for the prize, so now I can reveal who it goes to unless there is action from the three finalists, but I don't think so. The check goes to Lee Chapman. Because I got three texts about uh, about the engine. No, do, do you, you you can stay. You can stay. Uh, your ID was uh, high resolution monitoring of weather impacts on infrastructural networks. Something that appeals to me uh, at least. It is to use the Internet of Things and low cost sensors to monitor the weather on a very dense network to improve the short range forecasting. Uh, you provided one example where low-cost sensors uh, connected to the internet could provide real-time information on the condition of roads in winter to inform efficient applications of salt on road surfaces and at the same time avoiding wasteful oversalting of roads. In the second example, you showed how other sensors could detect leaf wetness uh, on railways that often cause uh, trains with uh, problems uh, to, to stop down at the station and they get square wheels. Tom de Ruiter uh, and the other two finalists, uh, they, uh, they receive uh, a reward as well. And what I understand from the jury, and I have uh, gotten no influence whatsoever on the outcome of, uh, uh, of giving this prize, the other two uh, finalists, uh, they presented very good ideas as well. Tom de Ruiter, who sits over there, who is a computer scientist at Big Data Republic in the Netherlands, he presented an innovative idea making use of errors in consumer weather data to derive advanced weather parameters. 
and he proposed to use errors in ground surface measurements to derive information about meteorological conditions such as cloud cover and snow versus rain conditions. Geert-Jan Steeneveld and Sietse Koopmans from Wageningen, uh, Wageningen University, they are sitting over there, they discussed their idea, uh, crowd data assimilation, assimilation of crowdsourced meteorological data in uh, numerical weather prediction models to improve small-scale weather forecasts. The basis of this idea is to use crowdsourced data in high-resolution numerical weather forecast models to improve short-range forecasts. And uh, these three, the three, the winner and the two other finalists, uh, they were the making of the contest in which 12, uh, 12 persons or entities participated. And the board of the foundation calls for many more applicants uh, in the future. 25,000 euros is really worthwhile to do some work for, and it would be even greater when your IDs would be used as well. So the board will call for more IDs. And with this, I also want to make a great thank you to the board, and especially Rick Entis. Maybe you can come forward a short moment. Rick has been the chairman of the board for the past six years, and without saying anything less about the other board members that will say goodbye now, I, uh, I believe, I believe uh, Rick was a real fantastic chairman, and I couldn't thank him more. I, I was so honored that, uh, that Rick, who has been the president of UCAR, the University Corporation of Atmospheric Research in Boulder, uh, has been the chairman of the foundation for the last few years after the first chairman, Hans Reif, all of a sudden died. And never something was too much for Rick. Uh, he would get up, he would be in the office still at five in the morning, and you could always reach him uh, when we got up in Europe, uh, he already was on his desk, kind of, even despite eight hours difference. Uh, but uh, you, and with Dominique Marbouti, and with Dennis Schultz, uh, who also say goodbye to the board today, you did a fantastic job in accumulating all the ideas, uh, making judgments about it, uh, uh, getting the three finalists to come here, listening to their stories, and uh, then make the good judgments. So, my, think, my things are very great, and I'm very proud that, that I could get you and Dominique Marbouti and Dennis Schultz on the board uh, to really get the foundation going. And uh, I would have wished I could change the statutes that you stayed a bit longer, but that is not possible. But uh, we, uh, we are going to celebrate that tonight, and uh, many, many thanks, and also many thanks to Dominique and to Dennis. And I hope that many more people will uh, apply for the prize and, uh, well, I hope that two years from now I can give the prize to a young or maybe even an old scientist because it's about the ID and not about uh, use or something like that uh, in September uh, 2019 in Copenhagen. Thank you very much. And now we come to the, the final award, which is the, the MS Silver Medal. And there is the medal. And let's go on to the next one. The, uh, the Silver Medal is awarded to Julia Slingo. Julia is honored for outstanding contributions to meteorology and climate. This has included a new understanding of monsoons and intraseasonal variability associated with, with the Madden Julian oscillation, and with the development and implementation of seamless weather and climate prediction. Furthermore, she has facilitated joining together strong relationships, frameworks, and networks, and championed the importance of communicating the dangers of climate change to decision makers and the public. Now, unfortunately, Julia can't be with us, but Florence Rabier uh, is here, and she's going to give the laudation and then I'm going to read out a message from Julia. So, France. So it will be my pleasure to remind the audience why today the EMS is giving this prestigious silver medal to Julia Slingo. So, Professor Dame Julia Slingo has made an outstanding contribution to meteorology on an international scale 
and throughout her career, she's brought innovative approaches to understanding and modeling weather and climate. Her, her approach has always been rooted uh, in her research, in observations and theory, uh, to use them to inform model development and to develop hypotheses about how the tropical climate system works. And she's then used climate models as computational laboratories to test these hypotheses. In her early career, Professor Slingo helped to significantly improve our understanding of clouds and how they interact dynamically with the atmosphere, carrying, work, carrying out work at the Met Office where she did pioneering work on the parameterization of uh, radiative transfer in global climate models. She then worked at the European Weather Center uh, where she uh, survived the constant scientific battles between two very strong personality in the parameterization section, so some people will, will know who I'm talking about. So it was Jean-Francois Gélin who also had the silver medal a few, a few years back, and Michael Titke. They were fierce competitors in their scientific ideas, and Julia was a bit in the middle, but actually she took it very well, and sometimes I've been told that she actually liked that, like the real head of the section, although she was the most junior scientist there. So after this very early and successful career, her rise has been quite meteoric, and I will jump what she did. She did many, many things, but you can see that on, on the resume in, in, on the website. I will sort of jump to the end when she was appointed Met Office Chief Scientist in 2009 because they really recognized the science leadership that she had provided to the UK and international research community. She has been very instrumental as chief scientist at the Met Office. She strengthened the scientific and technical program within the Met Office, driving forward integration of weather and climate, as we've heard, and building strong uh, partnerships. What sh one should also note that she has been very instrumental in successfully arguing the case for a multi-million investment in supercomputing for weather and climate prediction that will revolutionize the UK's ability to respond to the challenges of hazard hazardous weather and climate change. For a few years, she was a member of the ECMWF Scientific Advisory Committee, where I must say that she was much dreaded by the then head of research and actually some of the scientific teams, because indeed she made a real contribution to that committee where we expect people to challenge our plans, uh, but she did that quite vigorously and convincingly, which is what you expect from members of the committee, but sometimes it's a bit uh, difficult to manage. And she's been a strong advocate in that role of the seamless approach and the weather and climate approach with actually use it, using this unified modeling framework for all time scale is also a direction we are going to in, in, uh, at ECMWF. And of course, she's been pushing that as well uh, at the Met Office, of, your, of course, at the time. Uh, her... Uh, her range has been much broader than, than just, of course, the UK, as we said, and I think it was really an uh, honor when in 2015 she was appointed as one of the seven members of the high-level group of the new European Commission Scientific Advice Mechanism Group. So um, she received, now I will say a, a few things about her awards, which, of which one of, of this, this one is actually one of them, but uh, she received the Royal Meteorological Society's Buchan Prize in 1998. In 2016, she was awarded the IMO Prize of the World Meteorological Organization. She was awarded an OBE in, 20, in 2008. And in that year, she also became the first female president of the Royal Met Society. In 2014, she was awarded her Damehood for services to weather and climate science. And she was named as one of the top 100 scientists in the UK by the UK Science Council. In 2015, she was elected a fellow of the Royal Society. And 2016, she became a foreign member of the US National Ac Academy for Engineering. So I don't know if in her wall she has space for all these awards and all these titles. But as you can see, this is really a full library she needs to put, to put all that. And this really shows how influential her career has been. She retired in December 2016 after this long and distinguished career. Since her retirement, she's continued to be active and in particular as special advisor on climate for the Secretary General of the WMO. So I will conclude by saying that Julia indeed made a remarkable contribution to the field of meteorology. She's a truly shining role model for all of us in meteorology and in particular an inspiration for the young female scientists starting in the field. 
Her legacy will be long lasting and this silver medal could not have found a better recipient today. Thank you. Florence, thank you very much for doing that. Uh, now I have a, a message from Julia, which I will read out. First of all, I want to thank the MS for giving me this award, which I'm so honored and pleased to receive. It recognizes the contributions to meteorology that I and so many scientists with whom I've worked over the years have made. I've been very fortunate to work with many willing and able researchers and more recently to be given the amazing opportunities to lead, not least at the Met Office, uh, as the Met Office Chief Scientist. Of course, I'm deeply disappointed that I cannot be with you to give my lecture, but unfortunately, I'm still pinned down at home with the aftermath of a total knee replacement, which has been difficult and painful. I'd hope to speak to you about the weather and climate risk and how, through the coming together of what in the past, there have been separate research endeavours, we are now increasingly seamless in our approach. And we need to be, because the world faces unprecedented challenges from weather and climate extremes. Hurricane Harvey is very much in our minds as a timely reminder of how society and the infrastructure on which we depend can be disrupted on a scale that has not been anticipated. Today, we live in a global economy relying on global trade, efficient transport systems, and resilience and reliable provision of food, energy, and water. As we see time and time again, all these systems are vulnerable to adverse weather and climate conditions. The additional pressure of climate change creates a new set of circumstances and poses new challenges about how, to secure, uh, we were, how secure we will be in the future. More than ever, the weather and climate have considerable direct and indirect impact on us, on livelihoods, property, health, well-being, and prosperity. It's been immensely rewarding to see the barriers between weather and climate science and services gradually dismantled. During my time at the Mess Office, we set in place a single unified science program with common threads running through it. After all, the same fundamental science and technology underpins the way we model and predict the evolution of the atmosphere, oceans, and other components of the system. Just as we already simulate the slowly evolving global Earth system to understand long-term climate change, we are now seeking to simulate the rapidly evolving coupled environment down to the local scale to forecast and assess the local impacts. Along with seamless science and modeling, we also embrace ensemble prediction systems across all time scales. This has been a fundamental step towards risk-based forecasting. And of course, when we talk about weather and climate risk, then implicitly we have to consider the pathways to impact, what our exposures and vulnerabilities will be, and where we live, how we live, and how we go about our business. We're only just beginning that journey, but it will require the coming together of many disciplines and sectors to ensure that the probabilities that emerge from our ensemble systems are used in the best possible way. I can see these themes running through this year's annual EMS meeting, and I wish I could share the occasion with you all. May I wish you a productive, inspirational, and exciting conference, and thank you once again for this award. So, as I said earlier, uh, unfortunately Julia couldn't be here, but we hope that she will be able to go to Budapest next year uh, when we have the annual meeting and that she'll be able to uh, present the, the Silver Medal lecture on that occasion. So that's the end of the award summary. I'd just like to urge you to, to look out for the announcements of the awards for the next round of awards. I think the, uh, all the members, the member societies, associate members, of the EMS are informed about the awards and also it's on the website and we urge you to put forward your nominations. So that's the end of the evening, thank you.